Good morning, everyone. This is the third part of our series on Address the Mess. In this message will focus on partnership with God and others by looking at the text found in Philippians chapter 1, verses 4 to 6. It goes like this. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Think about this for just a minute. Here was Paul in chains because he had preached and defended the message of the gospel. And here, in this letter to the Philippians, he begins it with some words of praise and joy. Sixteen times in the book of Philippians do we find joy mentioned. Christ is mentioned fifty times because this is where true joy is found. Paul was full of joy because of what God had done in his heart and life. He was also full of joy because he had been experiencing a strong fellowship with these Christians at Philippi. Approximately ten years had passed since this church had started. From that very first day until now, this partnership had continued. Partnership, what a great concept. The very idea of partnership exudes warmth. Two or more people working together towards mutually desirable goals. Two or more people with different perspectives and abilities. Respecting the views, talents, dreams and abilities of other partners. With the freedom of the gospel, comrade is a comforting term. For example, Paul and Timothy were truly comrades, partners, united in a common goal, not out of fear or force, but in grateful response to the gospel, the good news about Jesus Christ. For our partnership in the gospel to function, we need to treat our partners as God would want us to treat them. Sounds simple, until we let sin enter the picture. We start to think only of ourselves and not others. We start to keep score, do more than he does. I should have more to say. I work in the background and he works in the light. Sin is what causes us to look to ourselves and our building as the mission, rather than as a tool to help accomplish the mission. Yes, the demands of our lives and work do take a lot of time. We tired after a hard work week. Training for partnership can be made a part of our lives. We can pray while commuting. We can study the Bible a few minutes a day and easily read it entirely in one year. There are many small tasks that we can do. Let me read verse 6 again. It says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Who is the he of this verse? Of course, it is God himself. Paul does not refer to the good work he had done in Philip. Paul was the missionary who was sent by God to preach the gospel in Philip. Paul did, of course, a great work there. He established the church and built it up. But when he writes in this letter, he does not refer at all to the work he had done. It was God's work through him. Not only did God initiate the work in Paul, but Paul remembered how God also initiated the work in the Christians at Philippi. See the key word to understand verse 6. The word in. He who began a good work in you. What Paul is talking about here is what the Bible elsewhere calls being born again. A Christian is not someone who has simply changed their ways and decided to reform their life and be a little bit better and more religious. 
No. A Christian is someone in whom God has done a work that is so radical, it can only be described as being born again. Sometimes, the Bible refers to this change as being transformed into a new creation. What God begins continues in us. He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. You can't grow in Christ's likeness without struggle. You can't come to spiritual maturity apart from being put through fire, the fires of disappointment, heartaches, and trials are all part of the great process of God continuing the good work He began. We may not be able to understand it now, but in the future we will see how these things are all part of the great process of God continuing the good work He began. He has an ultimate purpose in the work He's doing. What is the purpose of this work? Well, Paul gives the answer being confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will perform it, perform it until the day of Christ Jesus. So we are being prepared for the day of Christ Jesus. What is the day of Christ Jesus? Well, according to the Bible, it is the great day when the Son of God will return to this earth in power and glory. It is the day of God's final triumph over evil and when christ comes we will share in his glory there's absolutely no doubt about it says paul his confidence is based on the character of god himself god never starts a work and leaves it unfinished that would be a contradiction of his character god is not like man we start things but we do not finish them Thank God that our hope in Christ does not rest on our willpower. It rests on the fact that God would never have started the work in us if he had not decided to finish it. Amen.